need help. I know. My husband, my husband was shot. I need help. I need help. Okay, stay on the line with me. Just after 11 p.m. on New Year's Eve, uh, we received a 911 call from a female subject. She was screaming into the phone, talking about her husband being shot. And then all of a sudden, the phone went dead. When I arrived on scene there, medic one ambulance was backing up in the driveway. As I exited my patrol car and approached where I saw the victim laying by his truck, along with a female subject, kneeled down beside him. Let me get in there, man, OK? She was pretty hysterical. I actually had to pull the female away from him so medics could actually get in to treat him. Officers learned that the gunshot victim is 23-year-old Army Sergeant Tyrone Hassel III. The woman is his wife, Kamaya. I got a call from Kamaya. I can barely understand what she was saying, but she was screaming, and then she was like, Ty's been shot. And I'm like, what? As I was driving home, the only thing I can, I was thinking is, I just hope he'll be OK. What did he get shot at? Who is it? You know who he is? my it? son. It's Tyrone Hassel III. When I got there, I can see where he was shot at. And I can see a big hole in the back of his head. I knew at that point when I saw my son, I, I prayed for the best, but I knew I knew my son was dead. At the hospital, Sergeant Hassel's stepmother is on duty when the ambulance pulls up to the ER. I see the paramedics come through the uh, doors. One of the paramedics was on top of him doing chest compressions. To me, it seemed a long time, but it probably was a couple of minutes before um, the doctor came out and told me it was nothing else that they could do. Hey, my son ain't never did nothing to nobody, man. Detectives start their homicide investigation at the scene of the crime. We found spent gun shells laying on the ground right next to where Tyrone was laying. The shell casings were examined, and we determined it was from a 9 millimeter handgun. Based on what we found on Tyrone the Third, we, we saw that he had all of his money, he had an expensive watch on. So if robbery isn't the motive, then usually it's some kind of personal vendetta. The police was asking me, did he have any enemies? I couldn't think of a soul, not one person. My right. son walked a straight line his entire life. That's my oldest son, and I've been so proud of him. Yeah, he's active military right now, right? He's active military. While in the Army, Tyrone fell for a fellow recruit named Kamaya. We could tell that he really cared about her because all he talked about was Kamaya this, Kamaya that. When I finally met Kamaya, they were married, and they came home for Thanksgiving. She called me dad immediately. She was my new daughter. Tyrone called me one day, and he just was like, you about to be a grandma. And I was excited. My son was so happy. Then a week after their son's first birthday, Ty and Kamaya was deployed to Korea in February of 2018. After nine months in South Korea, the young family returns and settles into their new life in Hinesville, Georgia. The following day, investigators continue their work at the crime scene. One neighbor indicated that they had seen a vehicle backed into a residence that was actually for sale. He'd reported that the house was, was vacant. He described the car as being in that driveway and seeing somebody run from that car in the direction of Hassel's house. It looked like a male subject. The neighbor advised that after he seen the subject run towards the house, he heard the gunshots, saw him get in the car, and that's when he saw the car speed away rapidly. The witness described the car as a newer, dark color sedan. He described the headlights as being special headlights, which were LED headlights on that type of a car. An autopsy on Tyrone determined that he had been shot five times four in the head area and one in the shoulder, all at close range within three to five feet. It wasn't, you know, a drive-by shooting. 
whoever did this wanted Tyrone to see who did it. During this investigation, police left no stone unturned. But then St. Joe police get a tip that completely opens up this case. I also have a military son. He was very distressed about the situation. You guys should look at the wife. This caller says that police should look into the wife because the wife had a boyfriend. And because of that relationship, Sergeant Hassel was killed. The anonymous caller says their son served with both Tyrone and Kamaya and lives in the same town in Georgia, where the Hassels are stationed. Two soldiers actually came forward at Fort Stewart to the Army Criminal Investigation Division. We were informed that Kamaya had been having a romantic relationship with another soldier in their unit, Jeremy Cuellar. The relationship was witnessed by a soldier who basically was a bunkmate of, of Jeremy Cuellar and spoke of the, uh, you know, the infatuation he had with Kamaya. When did you first know they were involved? Because uh, we, we all used to sleep in the room together. And then they'd be in the bed and I'd be on the, uh, on the other bed on the floor. OK. According to the soldier, the relationship began when Tyrone, Kamaya, and Jeremy were stationed in South Korea. So when they got back to the States from Korea, Kamaya and Jeremy continued to have a lot of contact, and they did it through Snapchat. The soldier says they're, they're communicating over Snapchat because Snapchat basically deletes everything. You don't have any record of the conversation. He said Jeremy was obsessed with her, that he would have done anything to be with Kamaya, up to and including killing for her. Later that day, Army investigators receive even more disturbing information about Jeremy Cuellar. Another soldier from the same base came forward and indicated that he had actually sold Jeremy two different uh, handguns. Can you explain that to me? Run that down? Oh, I sold him with my firearms. Two times? Mm -hmm. OK. One of the handguns was a Glock 9 millimeter, I believe, and the other one was a uh, Ruger 9 millimeter. That was significant because the caliber of the weapon used to kill Tyrone III was, was a 9 millimeter weapon. The soldier also tells investigators that Jeremy shared a disturbing story of what he did on his Christmas break. Jeremy gave him a play-by-play -play of what he's been doing over vacation, including staying at his mom's house in Chicago, driving to Benton Harbor, where Kamaya's in-law lived, staking the house out for three or four days, he said he was there waiting for Tyrone to get home. And when he walked back out of the house is when he killed him in his driveway. Jeremy Cuellar went on to tell this soldier that I shot him multiple times. I walked up to him and walked over him and shot him again. So he really laid out the crime, how he committed it, and just the gruesome, awful details about how he executed Sergeant Hassel. On January 11th, at 10 p.m., deputies in Georgia convene at Jeremy Cuellar's home to execute a search warrant and take him into custody. While searching his car in the back seat, they find a 9 millimeter magazine that fits into a Ruger pistol. Looking through the bullets, it was the same brand of ammunition that was used the night of the murder. 11 days after Tyrone was killed, Police in Georgia charged Jeremy Cuellar with first-degree murder. We were certain that Jeremy committed the murder. The outstanding question was, what was Kamaya's role in that? Was she the mastermind or an innocent victim here? Kamaya admits that on the days leading up to Tyrone's murder, she and Jeremy had communicated via Snapchat about their plans. These Snapchat messages, are they going to make you look like you're pushing us? Because you're calling them back? Yeah. It's going to make me look like I pushed them. So are you guys talking? Because they're going to get through a correspondent every day and you let them. I mean, this is a, would you say this is a 50-50 you guys were on this? Yeah. Okay. Because I know all about it. Kamaya admitted to Detective Lieutenant Longusky that she and Jeremy had both taken part in planning this. What do you think should happen to you right now? 
I don't know. Because myself, I feel just as guilty as him. Why didn't you call up my house out this divorce? I would have called it off. Like, Jeremy probably would have, like, been upset at the fact that I called it off. And I, I didn't want him, like, mad at me. Okay, but you understand, though. Calling it off would have saved your husband's life. You could have divorced him. Mm -hmm. To investigators, Amaya's confession is proof that she was a willing accomplice in her husband's murder. We did discover that as part of their military insurance, when there is a death of a spouse, that she does get a settlement from the insurance company of about $400,000. I brought up the money, and she admitted that was part of it. And that money would help her and her son get a better start with Jeremy. As the prosecution prepares for Kamaya's trial, they discover a surprise piece of evidence. After the arrests were made, I'd actually obtained uh, an auto recording of Kamaya Hassel speaking to her mother. And the entirety of the phone call was another confession. Hey, what's going on, Kamaya? I'm in the jail. Why are you in jail? I know what was going on with Tyrone. I got myself mixed up in something I didn't think would be like this. Do you uh, remember one of my coworkers I was telling you about, Quayar? We planned it. I had most of Jesus. I knew we had strong evidence prior to that. But when I heard that, this case was going to trial, full steam ahead. There's not going to be any deals for you, Kamaya. Six months after her arrest, the trial of Kamaya Hassel begins. Over three days, the prosecution calls 23 witnesses to the stand. We really focused on Kamaya's confession to Detective Longusky. We focused on the evidence that was found in her cell phone and that second confession she made to her mom. So those were three really important pieces. When the jury went to deliberate, everybody's nervous. Less than two hours later, the jury returns with a verdict. They find Kamaya guilty on all three counts, first degree premeditated murder, conspiracy to commit murder, and using a gun to commit a crime. Kamaya was sentenced to spend the rest of her natural life in prison with no opportunity for parole. On July 29th of 2019, Jeremy Cuellar pled guilty to second-degree murder, put 65 years in prison. <laughs> 